This is a quick presentation on how to. This is a quick video presentation on how to create a parameterized web-based report using Cassandra as a data source. For this parameterized report, we're going to base the transformation on one that we created for the landing pages report um, during the um, how to create a report using Cassandra guide. So the first thing we're going to do is to open that transformation called top landing pages. And this transformation, and this transformation will be our starting point. So first I'm going to modify the Cassandra input step. We'll click to open it, and uh, all I'm going to do in here is I'm going to replace the hard-coded token that we had in here that we were searching for. I'm going to replace it with uh, a parameter. So we use dollar curly bracket, the name of the parameter, and then close curly bracket to specify that we want a parameter in our query. So now that we have a parameter in the query, we need to let the transformation know about the parameter. So I'm going to pull up the transformation settings, go to the parameters tab, specify that we have a parameter called page, and maybe um, set the default value to one of the pages, um, the about page. Okay, so we can now um, preview this transformation to see what data we get out of the Cassandra input step. And as expected, we've got our data back for the uh, for the about page. So, what we can do now is preview the data again, but using a different uh, value for that parameter. So, I'm going to click on preview, choose configure, and here you will see that in the parameter section, we've got our parameter called page with its uh, with its default value of about. And I'm going to choose slash demo and see what happens. So now. We've run this uh, query again, and we're getting data back now for, uh, for a different page, for the demo page instead of the about page. So we can tell that our parameter is working correctly at the transformation and the query level. Now we're going to save our transformation so that we can use it in our parameterized report. So I'm going to call it Cassandra Page Successions. Okay, so now we can switch over to the report designer. Do the report wizard. I'm going to pick a Pentaho data integration as my data source. I'm going to create a new query. I'm going to select the transformation that we've just saved under page successions. I'm going to preview the data. And you'll see that it's using the default parameter value for the query. I'm not going to worry about the parameter for now. I'm going to format my report first. So I'm going to pick my query that I've just created. I'm going to put the URL as the group by, so we get the initial URL that we're dealing with is going to be part of my header. So URL I'm going to call source page. Next URL I'm going to call destination page and count. I'm going to provide formatting and a total. This then is my layout. So when I preview um, we are going to see that we're getting the data for the about page uh, as expected with the, uh, the query that we have. So I'm just going to change my title to page successions. Remove my uh, subtitles. Uh, so next thing we need to do is to create a, uh, a parameter that will be used to drive the, the value that's being used in the transformation. The first thing we need is a set of data that's going to uh, provide the end user with something to pick from. So I'm going to pick an XML data source for this one. I'm going to select our pages.xml file. We had a new query, and I'm going to call that query, um, let's call it page list. In my query, uh, I've got XPath statement. 
pull the information out from the XML file. And here you can see we've got a list of pages. So this is just a list of unique pages within the website, and this is what I'm going to use to present to the user. So now we have a new data source, this page list data source. I'm going to click up here to add a new parameter. I'm going to double click and then select page list. I'm going to call this page. The label of page, the value type we know is a string. I'm going to choose to display this as a drop down list with the page list query and it's selected the right column, the right field from that data. That's all I need to do to create that. So now when I preview, we have up the top here, we have a control that will list out the pages on the website. But if you notice, when I make changes, we're still seeing the about page, and that's because we haven't associated the, the UI control here with the, the parameter in the transformation. So to do that, we're just going to go back into the data integration data source and choose edit parameter. I'm going to add a linkage in here between page, which is the parameter in our transform, and page, which is the GUI control. So now you can see that as I change the parameter up the top, it re-executes the report and brings back different data, and I can see which is my page that I am uh, that I'm seeing data for. So every time we change the control here, this is going to re-parameterize the query and get new data from Cassandra. So we're going back to Cassandra every time we change the uh, we change the control here. So the next thing I'm going to do is to save this report. I'm going to call it page successions. my login credentials for the server. I'm going to pick my Cassandra folder. Now that it's been published up there, I can see what it will look like when I access this report over the web through my browser. So here is our, um, our control for passing the parameters. And as I pick a different value, the report changes. And then when I want to, I can change the output type to maybe get a PDF of the report. So that was a video guide on how to create a parameterized web-based report using Cassandra as a data source.